Hello one and all. Today I got something a little bit different from my usual stuff. This is an old antique clock that we picked up at a flea market. Um, 50 bucks, I thought it was a good deal, but that's probably about what it's worth, doing a little bit more research. So, my girlfriend is here with me, just to help keep me sane. This was supposed to be her, like, gift. But um, I got this thing on the table, got it kind of running, and oh man, I was mesmerized. Anyway, it's got a couple things wrong with it. It seems to keep time pretty well, but it has an hourly uh, chime that doesn't work. So we took it to the clock expert, and he said, that we'd love to fix that for you. It'll be $550 in four months. And so here it is, about five hours later, having not been worked on. We're gonna take a crack at this. Um, before we go into it, I wanna give you a little bit of background. I am an engineer by trade, and I do car stuff for my hobby and this is extremely outside of my purview i understand this is one of those things that when people are into this it's like model trains they're like into it so uh, if you got this far i welcome you to watch me bumble and stumble my way through this and hope it's informative or at least entertaining so a little bit of background between this this is a chauncey jerome mantle clock it's from about the 1940s excuse me I always say that because that's when I think technology is from. So this clock is about from the 1840s. It is extremely old. So it's coming up on like 200 years old. And um, it's got a little bit of information on it. We thought this thing might have been valuable, but you know, it works pretty well for what it is, but they, they poop these things out by the hundreds. It's in pretty good condition for the 50 bucks that we got it for. The case is pretty nice. Nothing seems to be peeling or excessively worn. And what sort of other information do you have for us? It was made in New Haven, Connecticut, or Bristol, Connecticut. <laughs> yeah, it does have a little bit of information here, but mind you, this, these instructions were printed out in like the 1840s, so they're pretty much unintelligible. <laughs> so I don't really have the tools for this. I do have quite a lot of tools from my automotive stuff. So if we needed something like say a 27 millimeter hooked up to like a one inch drive ratchet, I have that. But for now, I just have a couple of little things. Pretty sure there's not a single, there's only like three screws in the whole thing. <laughs> well, if that's so, then whatever, we'll take it apart. We'll see what's going on. I'm hoping this is the old carburetor problem where you just take it apart and you clean it, you put it back together and it all works fine. So from what I understand, these two functions that this thing does, which is keep time and then chime on the hour, operate pretty much on totally separate gear trains. This over here is the time stuff, and over here is our hourly chime. So over here is the problem, but we are going to keep an eye out for anything that's loose, anything that's shaking, anything that's covered in crap, and we'll clean it. I don't know if you heard, girlfriend just mentioned we could take the face off very carefully. I think that's a good idea before I, I ding something. Yeah. So, so I'm hoping this Leatherman with all of its future powers of like, you know, 200 years of advancement since this clock will help get me through the worst of this. I am excited though. I love, I love mechanisms. And like I said, this thing was pretty mesmerizing to watch it work. It was very cool. So hopefully we can get it back to its former glory. My girlfriend knows her paint stuff, and this is like a, looks like hand oil painted. Oh, that was a good call. There we go. There's our clock face. Yep, just a piece of wood. Just a piece of wood. And here is our mechanism. There it is. So, when you time it by the hour, your hourly chime, you can roll these things forward to where you want it to go, but not backward to avoid a uh, backlash. And then you can set your timer here for your uh, hourly chime. So from what I understand, this little finger will go and drop into one of these and then as it goes, it'll have a ding. So here would be one. As it moves to that thick boy, that'll be ding for one. And it'll go over there, ding, ding, two. 
ding, 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 three, so on and so forth. And that's where we're having trouble. Now that I've got all the guts showing, I might just try to see what our mechanism looks like. Because you're supposed to be able to make it start by lifting this up. And I was having some trouble doing that. It, it wasn't doing that either. So I think I'm going to put the weights in and see what it does. We've got our pendulum right here. I didn't have this thing around quite long enough to really mess with it. It seemed to keep time over a 24 hour period, which is pretty good given its age. All right, we got a weight here. This is our chime weight. Oops, thinking about it. And over here we got our time weight. Oh boy. It's a little heavy to just cram up there with two fingers. Don't. I hear I hear you over there. There we go. Look at that. So you would just give it a wine. Well, it's already wound up, and that's why the weight's there. There it goes. That's the time working. And they say you're supposed to be able to push that up and make it start going. But it doesn't seem like it wants to. It's not even like connected to the, the chime bit, the gear. It's not touching it. It's not. You're right. So maybe we have a return that's going wrong. Poke. Poke. If clocks are your... Oh, there we go. If clocks are absolutely your jam, um, I apologize. I'm trying my best. Wee. I have no idea what this little flapper thing is or what it would be called because it looks like something that you'd put on like a clockwork mechanism to like fake someone out. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, this totally does stuff. So it looks like we have a lever moving back there too. So here we go, I, I wound it forward a little bit and now it's sitting in a, um, in a waiting groove. So let's push it up. Okay, this should start turning. All right, something is bound up here. You, you know that old saying, you can't push a rope? Well, this should uh, be causing some slack, and it's not. So up here, it looks like we jumped the roller. There's a roller up there, and it's causing it to bind in some way. Let's see if I can't fish it out. All right, so we just pulled this up. get it back on its roller Let's see if that helps us at all there we go we are now on a roller all right now that we have tension on all of our rollers let's try nope doesn't want to do it would have been too easy, I guess. All right, I poked at some of these levers in here, and I admit I am shooting in the dark. And right now, if you can see, we got our counter wheel. Whoops. We got our counter wheel back to where it should chime once, if I push this up. There's once. There's twice. So I think our trouble might have been that roller. It was pinched down in the V of that roller. And then you also be quiet. And then um, that was causing our some, some problems. And then uh, after that, it was just, excuse me, getting it timed. 
All right, here's three. I just wanted to tap. <laughs> what time is it? It is 4.45. 4.45, all right. We got a little bit of time before it's supposed to ding. I'm kind of curious what sets it off. If they are two separate mechanisms, then what's keeping this timing when this one hits the hour? Especially because I could just grab this well, hour hand and go... There's a second wheel and a minute wheel, I think. Or like, you know, different wheels counting different things at time. So it might be like when the hour wheel moves. Then I know, but if even if there is an hour wheel, watch, there's nothing moving right there. And I could just grab this and go... Nothing's moved. No. I don't know. There might be gears not mashing where gears need to mash. No, I think so, because it keeps the time well enough. I just got to figure out how to actually time well, it the by gears. the hour. I think I might have got it. So let's put the face on. There's our face. Let's go get it roughly timed. All right, it says 5.03. That'll give us a chance to check um, the chime. So, all right. Take it up on by. I'm starting to think about it. Let's go to 503. Bring this on around. Get that to five. And we'll stick that at three. All right, now it's time for the engineer's worst nightmare, counting. The last one that went was 11. And the next strike that we'll have will be six. So we're gonna go until we hear five strikes. So, one. Twelve. All right, one more. One. One. That's easy to count to. Two. Three. Four. Then it was five. go I think we might have gotten it um, only way to tell for sure is to see if it keeps time and as the pendulum stops <laughs> <clears throat> the only thing to do is to see if it keeps time and come back in an hour all right so I'm back from dinner we let this thing go a little bit and we're approaching seven o'clock I've set the strike so it, I've set the strike so it should strike for seven when we do hit it. When I was 
talking things over with my girlfriend, she mentioned a couple things that I, I neglected to say, and that was that this Chauncey Jerome is probably early 1840s, because it said it was made in Bristol, Connecticut. So this Bristol, Connecticut plant apparently burned down in like the early 1840s. I think she said 1842. So it's a pretty good indicator that we're talking very, very early 1840s for this. I'm pretty stoked with how this um, strike turned out. It was really just, it fell right off of the roller of the string and it got bound between the roller and the case. And that's consistent with the issues that I had seen since we got it in that it wouldn't wind. It felt like there was a lot of resistance winding. It's because it was binding both ways, both um, going into the reel and going down. But now that it's been freed up and kind of just uh, jingled loose, I think it's good. So here we go, we're coming up on seven. Let's see if she go. There we go. There's seven. Oh boy, I'm pretty stoked about that. You might have heard a little bit of creaking in there. That's from the roller. I didn't get a chance to actually like take the brass out, polish it or anything. I'm just happy that it's functioning as it is now. I've got some like specific clock stuff coming in like the oil brass cleaner so i'm going to get to that at a later date but for now i'm pretty happy with the way this thing turned out i'm i'm excited that we get to have it i'm excited to maybe work on it a little bit more and maybe you'll see that in a later video until then thank you very much for watching have a good one take it easy